Hi guys, I'm back with another design class on Editor X, and this time we're going to be covering the ins and outs of hover interactions. In my last class, we set up the first section of my page with an epic showreel using video box and light box. In this class, we'll be designing the next section of that same page using a grid and hover interactions to show some of my recent projects in a fun way. A project gallery with a twist, if you will. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is select our section and apply a grid. You can choose one of these layout suggestions, but I'm going to need a custom one for a 4x3. Guys, I need some space. Not that kind of space. Between the items in my grid, I mean. So I just click Adjust Grid and then Edit Grid and set the horizontal and vertical gaps to 10 pixels each. I also think this would look way better if we turn those rectangles into perfect squares instead. I've actually got a great tip for you if you want to be really exact with your measurements. If you select the top tab and change the column width unit of measure from fraction to viewport width, you'll be able to get the exact value you need for the row height to make this a perfect square. Just making a note of that before I change it back to fraction. But now we'll select the tab on the left and set the row height to 23.7 viewport width. Doesn't get more precise than that. Hang on, we'll just do the same for the next two rows. All right, so we've got our grid layout set. Now, hover interactions are all about making the web experience dynamic, really creating a way for users to interact with the elements on the page. To add interactions to an element, you need to apply them to its parent container. So let's grab a container from the Quick Add tab in the Add panel. It's the fastest way to add frequently used elements to your canvas. We'll stretch it. And I know it's hard to see, but we'll need to use the design panel to remove the borders around this container. Time to fill this grid up with some of my favorite projects. I'll head over to my media files and choose a GIF. We'll start by stretching these bouncing eyeballs. <laughs> I never thought I'd have to say that sentence. Next, I'll head over to the decorative tab of the ad panel to choose a shape for a hover interaction design. Let's keep it simple and add a circle. The real fun will happen when we add some movement. We'll get there soon. So the inspector panel can also be used to adjust an element size and position. We'll set our circle to the center and middle and change the width and height to 100%. Back to the design tab, let's match this circle to the rest of the site and make this bright green. To move things along, I've added my project name and year and stacked them together. Here's where things get interesting. Like I said, the best way to use interactions is to apply them to the parent container of the elements we want to affect. Once you apply them to the parent container, you can specify the interaction settings for each element inside it. To apply one to this circle, we'll select its parent container from the blue breadcrumbs and head over to the interactions tab to add a custom one. Let's set up the interaction for our stack. The basics to setting up any interaction is to define the initial state before you mouse over it and the hover state. For this design, I want the text to appear gradually when we hover over the image. So I'll start with the initial state and set the opacity to 0%. This means that the text will be invisible at the start and gradually increase to 100% opacity when we hover over it. I also want this circle to only appear when you hover over a project so that we can get a good look at the gallery in its initial state. When you've got a bunch of elements placed over each other, it can be tricky to select the one you're after. An easy way around this is to right click over an element and select the layer you want from here. So I'll choose the basic shape from my layers and now I'll set the translate on the Y axis to 100%. And you can see the shape has moved entirely below the image on the initial state. But you can see when I switch to hover, that shape pops right back into place. I do want to muck about with the scale a bit, so I set the X and the Y to 150% so it takes over the entire cell. Now as someone whose alter ego greatly enjoys making music, I can tell you with absolute certainty that timing is everything. So we're going to set the duration for both the shape and the stack to 0.4 seconds. We're getting very specific here. Let's preview what we've got so far. <laughs> yeah, amazing. The only thing is, I want our circle to take over the cell, but not spill out of it like this. 
So I'll just head back to the editor and grab this container. And all we need to do is go to the inspector panel and to set the overflow content to hide. Let's give it another go. <laughs> yeah, nailed it. Nice. Now, on to our next project. Do you think I was going to take you through that setup all over again? No way. That's what the duplicate button is for. Also, to speed things up, I leave the text the same for each project now and update them all at the end. We'll use the three dots to duplicate it and stretch it. To place it in the right cell, we'll use the grid area and set it from column two to three and row one to two. Awesome. To update the image, I'll use the right click menu to select it. Hit change image and choose this sweetheart over here. Let's switch things up with a hover interaction on this one. Again, we'll select the container and use the interactions tab to set up a custom one. Don't be afraid to make the dialogue between the viewer and the site page a little more unexpected. You can add different hover interactions to different individual elements inside the same container. For example, you can make each text box in this stack move into the shape in a different direction on hover. And that's just one suggestion. The possibilities are really endless and that's what makes this so exciting. For the sake of my design, I want to change the direction this circle appears on hover. So I'll grab it from the layers panel and this time I'll set the initial translate Y to negative 100%. Let's pause again for a quick look. <laughs> it's really coming together, isn't it? All right, let's set up the next project. I'll show you this one last time to make sure you've got it down. First, we duplicate the container, then we stretch it and use the grid area to set it into place. I want this next one to spread over two cells this time. So I'll set the grid area from column three to five and keep it at row one to two. Just need to change the image. Welcome to my version of Outer Space. And you know what's next. Let's set up another custom interaction. This time I want our circle to come in from the bottom right. To do that, I need to select the initial state and set the translate X and Y to 100%. Think of it as moving one space to the right of the image and one space down. So you've got it just outside the bottom right corner now. Now I've spared you the time and I've set up the rest of the images in my project gallery. And this is what we've ended up with. I couldn't think of a more reflective way to showcase my work, keeping it fun and high energy as always. Thanks for watching everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this class and feel inspired too. You know, just embrace your creative voice and have fun with your next design. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my other classes to see me experiment with video box and header scrolls on Editor X. Cheers, guys!